Sripad is saying that Akila sadhana sadhya tuchavat, that all the possible, any kind of sadhana and sadhya you can conceive of practicing or any goal you can hope to attain, it's insignificant when you compare it to serving Radharani's lotus feet as her dasi in Manjri Bhav or Kinkari Bhav, which is the kind of the conclusion after, of this verse 62. And of course, he's trying to encourage everyone uh, about this point. So to attain Sri Radha's eternal loving service in the charming bowers of Vrindavan, she's so beautifully described here as Sri Vrindavan, Sri Vrindavan Kunja Manjo Grihini. Grihini means housewife, but it means the lovely goddess of the Kunjas. So in Ramananda Samvad, that's of course in uh, Madhya Lila chapter 8, Lord Chaitanya asks, what is the ultimate goal of life? which makes all other goals insignificant. Because this verse is talking about sadhya. Sadhya means goal, attainment, objective. What is the objective? We're, like we ask someone, what are you doing? I'm practicing sadhana bhakti. What do you want? I want... Thank you. I want to go back to Godhead. People say I want to go back home, or I want to go back to Godhead. So the idea is, I, okay, I want to go to a place the Dham, the spiritual world. But I want to... What do you want to do there? Well, I want... Basically, we should say, I want I want to attain Krishna Prem. Whether I go here or there, it doesn't matter. Because that's Lord Chaitanya's teaching us. He's telling us the goal is Prema. And Prabhupada's encouraging us, just get out of this consciousness. Get out of this enjoying <coughs> consciousness. Get out of this material consciousness and world and go there to the Goloka, the spiritual world. And then... But everywhere, Prabhupada is also telling, the goal of human life is prema, Krishna prema. So our goal is prema, whether we take birth again or not, it doesn't matter. Because if you're in prema, then you're in the spiritual world. Because the world, is, it's a world, we say world, but actually it's consciousness. That's why Prabhupada says Krishna consciousness. It's a plane of consciousness. So when one is attains purity in mind and heart, and actually attains bhava and prema and bhakti, which is the ultimate attainment, then he he doesn't feel that I'm not in the material world. He's called he's called liberated. He's actually Jivan Mukta Sayuchate. Said Iha Yasya Harer Dasye, Karmana Manasagira. Says Jivan Mukta Sayuchate that he's all his karmas, all his Prabdha and Aprabdha and Kutama and Bijam all of his karmas, everything, anything that's material about him has been eliminated. And he's, he, she, whomever, they are in divine consciousness. They are in pure Krishna consciousness. So they're, the Bhagavatam is saying they're jivan mukta. They're already liberated. They're in the body, but they're liberated souls. So what, if they're liberated, it means they're free. They're not here. They're not, this is a place of bondage. Janma mrityu. So if they're liberated means liberated means freed from one thing. You're, someone ties you up, and then they. What does it mean to liberate you? It means they untie you, and you have freedom of movement. So when you're liberated, then you go to the dam, the param dam. So even when they're here in this world, they're living in that consciousness. They're living in the spiritual world. So prema is our goal. So this is the topmost goal. So Lord Chaitanya is echoing the same point, because Sripad Prabhupada the Saraswat. Prabhupada, Ananda, Saraswati, and all of her acharyas, they take their lead, they get the foundation of all the philosophy. It's Gaudiya Siddhanta. It comes from the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and his inspiration, his empowerment, is enabling, has enabled all of our Mahajans and Gaudiya Vaishnava acharyas to write the books they wrote and to give the teachings they gave and to live the lives they lived as examples and directions and guides for us to attain spiritual perfection in the eternal service of Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. So when Lord Chaitanya said, what is, there's so many goals of life, so many goals of sadhana, so many types of sadhana, which one is the best? And what does he say? Radhara prema sadhya shiromani mahima sarva shastrete vakani. Sarva shastrete vakani. The vakya. Shastra. All the Shastras are saying, what are they saying? Radha Prem Sadhya Shiromani Mahima. 
This is Radha Prem. Love of Radharani is the crown jewel of all goals of human life proclaimed by all the scriptures. So when, so what is, when God, you know, our God, our God is Radha and Krishna in the form of Mahaprabhu. And so God is asking on the behalf of all living entities because people often say they come to a spiritual movement or they meet some devotees and they say, oh, I'm confused. We often hear this word, I'm confused. <laughs> ever, ever feel confused? So they, they say, I'm confused. There's so many gurus and there's so many paths and there's so many movements and so many institutions and so many books and everyone is saying theirs is the best and, the, and, the, and the, we sh I should go there and go here. I, I'm confused. I don't know which way to go. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya, he's saying clearly, this is, the, as far as he's concerned, this is the Siddhanta, this is the Param Gati, the Param Gati and the Param Sadhya, the topmost supreme goal for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. So being a Gaudiya Vaishnava, as we all are, or trying to become, then we should identify with this conclusion because when Ramananda Roy gave this answer, Lord Chaitanya said, yes, this, this is right. But when Ramananda Roy gave other answers to his questions, Gurunga's questions, then Lord Chaitanya said, no, this is wrong, go higher. At one point he was discussing, and their discussions, Ramananda Sambhad, Lord Chaitanya said, how, how do you attain the goal of life? And Ramananda Roy said, oh, karma samarpan. He should offer samarpan. You should offer the Lord the results of your karma, samarpan. And then Lord Chaitanya heard that answer. He said, "No, I reject this. This is this is too. This is not. Go higher. Tell me more." And then he said, "Oh, what is the path? What path should we follow to attain perfection?" Then he said, "Oh, we should do nishkam bhakti." And Lord Chaitanya said, "No, this is not." This is okay, but you must go higher. I don't accept this. Then he said, he said, Sarva, he quotes Gita, he says, Sarva Dharman Prityaja Mame Kam Sharnam Braja. We should surrender everything and just surrender everything to Krishna and depend on him and be fearless. And Lord Chaitanya said, no, this is external. Go higher than this. <laughs> so even the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, this is in Ramananda Sambhag, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, uh, chapter 8. Lord Chaitanya said, no, higher. Then he, then he said, oh, the, the way to attain the goal of life is higher than surrender is to follow the bridge Vasis and, Ra and Rag Marg, the Ragatmikas, as, as Krishna's servants or Krishna's friends. And it goes higher and higher. And finally, it comes what, to the idea of serve, worshipping and serving the bridge Vasis, the Ragatmika Janas of Vrindavan, and especially coming to all the way to serving Radha and Krishna. So here he's saying, what is the ultimate goal of life that makes all other goals insignificant? Which is exactly what this verse 62 is, to, is saying. What, what is the ultimate goal of life which makes all other goals? All other goals means Akila or Sarva. Akila Sadhya. Akila Sadhan. All other goals. So Sripad Prabhupada Saraswati, who is an eternal associate of Radha Govinda and Gauranga, he's saying the same thing. All their goals and all their sadhanas are tuchavam. They're insignificant when compared to this. What is that? And that's the answer Ramananda Roy gave. Radhara prema sadhya shiromani mahima sarva shastrete vakani. The crest jewel of all sadhyas. Sadhyas means goal. The crest jewel of all goals is the love of Radharani. Radhara Prema. Radhara Prema Sadhya Shiromani Mahima Sarva Shastriti Vakani. The Radha Prem, the love of Radharani, is the crown jewel of all goals of human life, which is proclaimed by Sarva Shastra, all the Shastras. So this is the fact uh, that it's told here, and this verse concludes on that point, that this is the greatest goal. And then if one is 
somehow has the fortune of following this type of sadhana to achieve this sadhya, which is the matchless gift of Lord Goranga, then what he experiences, he or she experiences, then that's also told here. And the last phrase, he says, Dattva Svadasyotsavam. He's saying that this is a festival, Dasi, Dasi Utsav, Das Utsav. <laughs> Usually, if someone thinks of a festival, they think that they're in a festival, if it's to be really Utsav, or a festival of enjoyment, they may think that they should be the center. Someone may have a birthday party, then they are the center. Everyone's giving them gifts. Everyone's coming to visit them or, or honor them or whatever. Whatever is done in a birthday party, there's whose birthday? It's someone's birthday, some man or woman. Everyone's coming to congratulate them and wish them well and bless them. But here, it's a festival, a slavery festival. <laughs> Being a, a festival of slaves. So the slaves, in one sense, were slaves of love, were slaves of Radharani's loving service. A maidservant means you do anything. You're a handmaiden. Uh, whatever I tell you to do, you do. So that's a festival, the festival of seva, seva utsava. So it's called dasi utsava, swadatam, swadatva. When will you, when will you give this to me? O oh, Radharani, our, in this verse it says, you have bestowed. One translation says, you have bestowed. And... Uh, So this he's saying that she's a bestower of this this great uh, excuse me she's uh, yes that one one will actually feel this way according to the second translation one will feel that everything is insignificant many times devotees have practiced different paths and different uh, spiritual practices before coming to Krishna consciousness or maybe even a context of Krishna consciousness practicing Vaidhi Sadhana but what's being said here in the translation is part of this he said when a devotee comes to the path of Raghunuga Bhakti or Rag Marg then he may think that whatever other practices that he may be performed outside of Krishna consciousness or preliminary to adopting the path of Bhakti with the intention of attaining Krishna Prem, he may think that, oh, they're all tuchava, they're all insignificant. So when when someone, Dattva, dvat, uh, Dattva says Rasotsavam, if Radharani, if Radharani somehow, Radharani bestows the great gift of her seva, of her service, and accepts us as one of her aspiring maidservants, a sadaka, of Raghunuga Bhakti, then one feels that he, he's really attained great fortune, that he's really attained, it's a festival, life has become a festival, a festival for his consciousness, a festival for his mind, his mind, a whole new paradise, a whole new paradise and, and paradigm, a whole new paradise and paradigm opens in his mind and heart. Because before that, now, now he had, the follower, the Raghunuga Bhakta, on the path of Mantri Babu Pasana, he has a very, it's a very specified, he has Guru, Diksha and Shiksha Guru are guiding him on the path of Bhajan and the path of meditation and Smaran. So as he treads that path, it's very specific and it has its guidelines and when you practice this, like anything, like you may get a book on yoga, Hatha Yoga, and you take it home and you learn Surya Namaskar and you learn some asans. That's one way to do it and you can get some good knowledge. But if you're fortunate to meet a very compassionate and good teacher of yoga, then you can learn very nicely and much more uh, per perfectly. And uh, uh, avoid some of the pitfalls or maybe mistakes. You may, may even injure yourself without a teacher if you perform Hatha Yoga the wrong way hurt your neck or th different things like this. Or what to speak of you if, if you have high blood pressure and then uh, you, you, you decide, you look at the yoga book and it says, Shirasan is very good. It's very good for health. Shirasan. Standing on the head. 
But if you have high blood pressure, even if you're taking blood pressure medicine to pacify it, it's very, very dangerous asan. Very dangerous. And the book may not tell you that, but if you stand on your head, you may have a heart attack <laughs> or a stroke. So therefore, before one has uh, proper guidance on the path of bhakti and uh, meditative practices, it may be a little scattered and not focused or clearly understood. So here he's saying, when Srimati Radharani, Dattva Sadasyam Utsavam, when Radharani gives the festival of her personal service, then one will realize that all their sadhana and sadhya he cherished and practiced are tuchavam. Insignificant. In one sense, everything, anything connected with God is not insignificant. It's very, very significant and very valuable and productive and helpful and purifying and elevating. Because without, without primary school, you can't go to secondary school. And without secondary school, you can't go to a university. So everything is, is unified and connected. But it's, it's a bhav, it's kind of a bhav vichar. He's saying, oh, in other words, if you get something wonderful, you, you'll think, well, what I had was okay, but this is, is better. Now, you may have had an average type of car, but somehow by good fortune you got a very comfortable, costly car. And you all think, oh, this is so good. And no, oh, that one was so not, insignificant. <laughs> but it's just his mood, he's saying. He may feel like that. But everything, whatever... Whatever path we're on, whatever spiritual practices we're performing, is all by the mercy of Guru and God. So we're thankful. We're ever thankful and ever grateful for whatever we've received and whatever we're practicing. And if by chance, if by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, we are promoted and go to an, come to another level of sadhana, uh, another level of practice, then we may certainly appreciate whatever we had but then we'll very much appreciate what we've attained. We'll very much appreciate that. So this is kind of the, the synergy of, of all the different steps that a sadhaka will take, take in order on his path of perfection. And gratitude is a keynote. We're always grateful. I have an expression in America, don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> so we've been getting, we're fed along the way from the time we're born until we die and in, same thing in spiritual life. We're always being fed and nourished, fed and nourished. Our bhakti, our development, our spiritual development and progress, we're being nourished and fed. Fed means given food by guru, by Vaishnavas, by Krishna in the heart. So this is a continuous point like this.